I met this man at a party um, before the pandemic at a show. And yeah, uh, yeah talented, creative. I mean, he's a creative producer, uh, a production designer. Uh, he has worked with, I'm gonna throw out some names, um, <laughs> Jennifer Lopez, Paula Abdul, um, oh, just so many people. He does shows for Disney. He did the halftime show at the Super Bowl. I'm gonna just introduce him, Clay Tarsitano. It's thank you, thank you. Uh, so how have you been? I've been great, been here in Los Angeles and working and, you know, and um, having fun as much as possible. You know, it was a crazy year for all of us. And now the world is getting back, you know, little by little, you know. Um, you know, you mentioned about the Super Bowl and everybody makes jokes with me. People like, oh, you guys did the last show before the pandemic. You know, people say it was like the uh, closing ceremony of the world, kind of. And then we just did the Global Citizen show at the Sofia Stadium, which was like the first big show after the pandemic. And now people make jokes, they're like, oh, and now you guys doing the opening ceremony of the world. <laughs> this is amazing. And you know what's interesting? This is a question that I have and related to that. How, you know, I mean, your job is so, you know, with people and setting up stuff. So you were shut down. Yeah. Completely shut down. Oi. No good. <laughs> no good. No, no good. good. So what, what, what sparked you into becoming a creative producer and production designer? Well, I, I cannot answer really that question. Like I always wanted, like since I'm, I'm a young boy, like eight years old, yeah. I used to do, even before that, because I remember I had my first Lego, I was like 10. And I used to, you know, people usually, they do houses with Legos. They do like gas stations. And I used to do stages with Legos. And I remember to buy the kits. I would ask my mom, oh, I want that kit. And the kit was like a, a police station, you know? But I never really built the police station. I remember to build the stage out of those pieces, you know? And my, my very, very first memory, I remember I was five years old. This I remember very clearly. I was five. And I remember to get a box. And I asked my mom to open a hole in a box, like a square, like a proscenium. And I used to like do things in there. And I like, you know, pretend it was a stage. I remember that it was before my six-year-old birthday. And I remember to do that. So I, I always had like stages in my, in my head and on my memories when I was young. So I always won that. I love that story. I love how yeah. it starts. It really does start in childhood. You know? Absolutely, absolutely. And I remember my very first time having, uh, like going to a concert or any like live performance. Do you know the holiday on ice? Yes, I used to go the, every year. Yeah, every year in Brazil, they used to do a tour in Brazil. And I remember to watch on television, the commercial, and I saw all those lights and I was like, oh my God, that's so beautiful. So I, uh, my school did the, like did the trip to the holiday on ice. And I saw I, nothing like blow me off. I was like, wow, that's beautiful. And I remember I used to have a, a little truck as a, as a toy and the truck has like a trailer in the back. You know, it was like a box tra truck. Yeah. And I remember to take the box off and I cut the front to make this, you know, the, the ice. So I put like a piece of paper and I, you know, to make the ice. I did some little lights on the paper around to do a board with lights because I remember the holiday night they used to have the ring the, the ice ring and they have lights around it I remember that so I did that I painted and then I make like a little curtain and you know this is so as, as I said it's always been part of me you know this well you know what's fa so fascinating I'm so glad you're here today because you know a lot of our students are, are uh you know want to be in front of the camera or on the stage and we do have uh, some students who like being behind the scenes, but it's interesting yeah. to hear you speak as you as a child, you, you weren't interested in being on the stage, you were wanted to design it. Is this, this is true? 
Yeah, I always been. When I start working in the States, I start working in front of the cameras. Right. But I just did that because I, I want to meet people. So that's why I work in front of the cameras, just to get networking and then start to do what I love to do, which is create shows, you know? Well, you, I mean, I mean, look at that face, <laughs> you know, you, <laughs> you are meant to be in front of the camera, but your joy, no, no. He, he says, no, 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 I like, I like this. Thank thing. you. What, yeah, what, yeah. what is your biggest joy? Family. My family is my biggest joy, for sure. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, their family to me is really important, and I always, you know, they're not here with me. You know, they're in Brazil, so I always fly to Brazil to be with them. During the pandemic, actually, I flew to Brazil. I spent seven months with them. That's what's like my biggest joy because oh. you know I, I'm really attached to them. So this is like my biggest joy. My family, you know, my you know the kids, my mom, my dad, my sister. Yeah. And uh, she has a beautiful uh, daughter and son that I love too. I have a dog named Astor that I love. So this is my biggest joy in my life. Yeah. Now, were you born there? Yeah, I was born in Brazil. Yeah, born in, born in Brazil. Yeah, um, you can hear my accent. <laughs> gorgeous. I just, you know, I have Thank to you. say, the the accents. It just it just makes me melt. It's it, it's and uh, now and then melt takes us into a melting pot. Uh, which is what we do as creative artists. We try, or at least this is where, where I come from, to bring yeah. people together through our art. Yeah. Um, what, what is your, what is the memory in your life or one mm -hmm. of the memories uh, in your life that you feel was the turning point for your success? I don't know. I mean, as I told you, I always knew what I want to do. So was I never thought, oh my God, I will be successful. Like, you know, like you, know, you don't have that. You know, oh, I did this. Oh my God, I'm gonna be successful, you know. So successful is a very complex, you know, subject mm. to me. It's mm. not just one thing. So sex is like it. so I I always want that. I always knew I would be doing that. I don't know how. I always, you know, like two plus two is four. I, when I was young, I was like, I was telling all my friends, I'm going to do this. I, like, you know, and people are like, oh, this guy's crazy. But, you know, it's always part of me. And, um, and I always want to do that. And I was like, I, I, I was not with the feeling and memory, like, oh, I wish I would do. I always tell I would do. Yeah. Like, I always knew I'm going to be leaving the States. I, I was like, I'm going to be leaving the United States. Like, you know, I was like 13 years old. Like, that was always on my brain. Nobody told me those things was something inside me that said, and to me, uh, success, you know, it's, it's, it's a bunch of things, and, but you have to figure out who you are to, you mm -hmm. know, once you know who you are, it's easier, because I feel people, sometimes they get lost in life, we see a lot of this, people sometimes come and ask me, um, you know, oh, you know, I want to do this, I want to do that, like, I, I want to come to Los Angeles, maybe, or something like that, you know, but, uh, but people doesn't have a plan. I feel that. I, I don't know if you feel like that too, but when I talk to people, a lot of people, oh, I want to be in Los Angeles. I want to oh, work in film industry on, on television. Yeah. Okay, great. What do you want to do on television? Uh, like they don't really know what they want to do. Mm. Or some people say, oh, I want to be famous, which is not good. You know, I'm not saying be famous is not good. What I'm saying is like, to have that goal is not great because the famous is after hard work, is a whole, is like a reward, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, which also is something that you have to be very careful because the fame is also, you know, is a little dangerous, have to be very careful also. But, uh, but what I feel is like, know who you are. That's a, that's a key point. And I always knew, you know? So I, I don't really have a memory like, oh my God, you know, oh yes, I'm gonna be, I did this, I'm gonna be successful now. But, um, but always studying a lot, I used to always study, you know, always do classes. I did the actually life coach class, which is great, you know? Yeah. Were you, were you a life coach for a while? No, no, I, I did some life coach classes, I, oh. but I was not a teacher, I was a student. And that, that, that's something that really, it, it opens your mind a lot. And this is a great thing to do as well. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, you know what's interesting that you said too. You said um, 
just how you, it's like, uh, this is what I'm doing. This is, I'm doing this. Rather than, yeah. um, Dee Wallace said to me once, uh, she, she, I had this quote that says, um, always know that uh, things are about, good things are about to happen. And she yeah. said, take, to take, take that word out of there, good things are happening. Um, yeah, exactly. And, exactly. and same with people, the way I teach too, it's like a lot of people say, well, I'm trying to, to, to get to this point. It's like, no, I'm, I'm there. You do yeah. it. It's like, grab it right now. You know, it's like, I want this, I want to sip. <laughs> yeah, because I, I would tell you something. Is, is exist a recipe for the success? I do believe it, it has a recipe. Yeah. It has. It does. As a list. People are, what's the recipe? It, it, it's literally. But I feel each person has a different flavor. Your success is a little different than mine. It's not the same recipe. Yeah. But I feel the base of it, like the dough or something like that. Uh, I feel, I have a feeling is figure out who you are. What are you here for? Who you are. Once you figure out who you are and work hard for it, you're unstoppable. Nobody can stop you. You go like a rocket. You know, you like I know I was born to be a doctor. And you're gonna be the best doctor because you know I was born for that. So I have a feeling uh, this is something that people should know. What do you what you are? Who are you? Who are who are David? Where's who is Clay? You know? Um, and once you figure out to me, it's like half of the process. This gets me a little verklempt. <laughs> Because it's yeah. so, it hits the core. I mean, you're yeah. hitting the core about really you, being good with you and what you want and doing it. Exactly. And never, it, and it's something that I always feel, uh, people come to me and like, oh my God, look, who are you? People say sometimes, oh my God, what? And I feel, I'm not something, I feel like I'm on I'm the right path. That's how I feel. Like I always like, oh, I'm doing those things, but. I'm, at a, I'm not there, like, and you, you should never feel that because you stop, oh, I got there, and then you stop. You always have to fight, you always have to work. You know, it's always, I think it's a constant climb, always. It's never, you never stop, oh, I reach my goal. Like, and then you stop living. You have to live, you have to work, you have to move. Do well, that, like, I, I have a friend of mine, he's 93, and he still do, he still do dance classes twice a week. So I think you should never stop. And he has something interesting too. He, uh, he still think about his love, his next love of his life. Oh, I, there you go. Yeah. So uh, he, was, he was with somebody for 15 years. They broke up like two years ago. Yeah. And, and, then, and then he was like, oh, I'm thinking about the next one. Like that's, so that's live. The, the age is just a number. You should always, right. always constantly, constantly work and constantly live. Always. Never stop living. And never grow up. I learned with my coach. Never grow up. Right. Oh my God. Yeah. You were saying you were saying about climbing. You know, constantly. You know, I pictured you on the the side of you know Yosemite, one of the mountains, climbing. I can imagine it, and the joy that you have from it, the joy from yeah. climbing to it. It's all about the journey. It's nowhere you want to go. It's all about the journey. Right. Uh, um. I'm going to throw out a name. Okay. Jennifer Lopez. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> well, she is an amazing person. Yeah. A hardworking woman. She works so hard. Like, I work with a lot of people. She really works hard. Like, she, like, and I don't know how she does. It's really amazing. Like, for rehearsals, like, she works since in the morning with meetings. And, and she has a lot of business too. So she has to take care of her business and then do rehearsals. And she did rehearsals for like 12 hours, 10 hours. And then she finished. Sometimes she stopped rehearsals. She go home to put her kids in bed and to cuddle them, like, you know, like, you know, tuck them in bed and then come back to work. It's, it's really amazing. Like she, um, she's a really smart woman, somebody that I really enjoy to work with. Now, how long have you been working together? Uh, four years. Four years. How did, years, how, did you, how did you meet? How did you start, you know, creating for her? 
Well, I, I was invited uh, to do a music video, uh, El Anilo, with Jennifer. And then I flew here to LA to do this music video. And during the process, I met Benny Medina, her manager. And then I met Tabitha Dumo, um, you know, Nappy Tabs, you know, Napoleon Dumo and Tabitha Dumo. They're the creative directors for Jennifer. And then um, they're like, like they, they just say, oh, we would you like to work with you or something like that. It was super simple. Like we did the work and they're about to do the Latin uh, billboards with that same song. So they say, can you help us with that award show? I was like, sure. And then, uh, and then we I never stop. And then they, they, we start to get along together. I really like working with, with Jennifer, with Benny, with, with Tabitha, with Napoleon. And then everything, and they became a team, you know? Right. And then I became part of the team and helping with everything. And, and I love it. Uh, it sounds, it sounds amazing. It shows that, you know, you, pre you prepare, you work, and you enjoy what you do. Um, yeah. Now, where, where do you get your inspirations from? Because you design you, you, all these different shows. And... Yeah, it all depends on the project. Uh, sometimes the inspiration comes like from a picture. Like sometimes, you know, Tabitha had an idea and then the idea come from a picture um, or Jennifer. You know, like it's just is like, or you know, I'm just talking about Jennifer because you mentioned her. But every single project, we always have you know a director or you know or an artist that have an idea or something. Or sometimes I have an idea that I did, but usually it's something like that. It's a simple thing, like you know, let's let's create this. It comes from one picture, and then my process is a different process because I don't like to look so much pictures. Right. I like to be isolated. So the last thing that I see from the outside, the better for me, because I like to be isolate. Some people that I know, they like to be Googling stuff. I, that's not really my process. I can get a, a picture from you as an inspiration, but I don't like to see much. Like, you know, show me that, like, boom. Okay, great. Or sometimes you don't even need to show me, or sometimes you just talk, you know, how about that? Boom, let's start with the box. And then let's, what do we do with this box? And then when I start really getting creative, my creative process, to me, my process it has to be isolated. I like to isolate myself. And then there's a trip coming in my brain and the ideas start to come. And I, it's always here on my process. There's a lot of in my, in my brain and a lot of talk and a lot of uh, collaboration. You know, listen to people, listen to everyone. You know, it's, it's like a big brain, you know? but made by like 10 people, you know, yeah. is every single person say something and then it changes something. Cause you can have this cube, but that, that person, oh, how about that? And then is everything goes like a puzzle, you know? Right. Yeah. Right. I, 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 that reminds me too of when, when some actors are about to do a scene for scene class or they're doing, um, they got cast in a play and they say, oh, I have to, some, not, not everybody, but there are a few that say, I have to watch the movie to see how it was done. It's like, no, no. I always like, no, come from here, not from there. I mean, I'm not saying that works for everything, but I, yeah. I, I like what you're saying, especially from your artist's perspective of it, you know? Yeah, yeah. Other than the acting, what if, what if somebody said, let's say we have over a hundred students at Performing Arts Studio West, we have Meet the Biz, we have YouTube Land. What if somebody said, okay, yes, I, I love working behind the scenes, and but how do I get into it? What what would you tell them? How the how the person will get you in? Yeah, or how do you how do you get into the business? This is really personal. Yeah. Each per is is so personal. It's as I told you, each person has your own recipe. Like I, I it's right. very hard to say, oh, do that. It's gonna be great for you. Maybe what is worked for me is not gonna work for other person, you know. Exactly. But what I can tell for sure, you know, is the connection is really important. And that doesn't matter who it is, the connection must to be right. Doesn't matter what you do, because what runs our business, uh, the currency is not the money. 
The currency is the energy. That's what connects everyone. That's what connects the people. That's why connect project and you can develop a great product together is the energy. That's what runs everything. You can be the best designer in the world. You can be the best actor in the world. You can be the best producer in the world. The energy must be right because you're working as an artist or with any artist, they run in a, in a vibe. They are vibing in an energy. You have to be together. You cannot be like that. They're, gonna, they're, they're not even going to see you. Yeah. So I feel the energy must be right. And then, you know, it, it has to have a connection, a project. So that's how I feel. Uh, my advice, if you say, is th that the currency is not the money. The currency is the energy. So just be energetically connected with whatever you do. Doesn't matter if you're gonna be you're gonna be uh, be uh, be a makeup artist or a designer, a producer, a wardrobe stylist. The connection has to be right. You have to get and light the room. That's how I feel it should be, uh -huh. especially for the actors, especially for the actors and performers is in front of camera. You cannot lie for the camera. The camera is, is a lamp. Has a guy in Brazil, he used to say a word. In English, it's not gonna make really sense, but he always used to say, look to the lenses of the truth. Mm. Like he always, his TV show. Look at that, because you cannot lie to a camera. You can, you can, you can be that person with everything. What's in here that's gonna project to the audience. So you cannot lie to a camera. Well, and it shows, it shows from you. I mean, just especially what you've been saying in this last moment, I get this complete realness. There's no schmaltz, there's no, hi, you know, there's no, <laughs> no put on. You're so real, you're so, you're, you're loving from a spot of not, you know, just coming from your true, true place. And, yeah that's how you get that connection so so well that's why people are drawn to you um what was one of your first jobs i read was one of your first jobs american idol yes that was okay now how can i do how did that happen i mean how did well i was actually working behind the or in front of the cameras back in miami Right, right. And I remember somebody uh, wrote on Facebook saying, um, oh, we need PAs in Savannah for American Idol. And that, that post on, Insta on Facebook really catch my attention. And I don't know how, like really strong. As I say, it's the energy that I was saying. The energy was inside me, like Clay called the number. Really, really like call. I was so excited just to see that Facebook post. Yeah. Like you don't get excited to see a Facebook post. Like that, that thing like was something stronger than me. I called and then the guy was like, and I said, hey, I'm Giovanna's friend. Uh, I saw in her Facebook that uh, you guys looking for PAs in Savannah. And then she was like, um, oh, but I see your numbers from Florida. And then I lied to her. Remember, I was like, I know, but I'm going to visit some friends next week in Savannah. I'll be there for two weeks. And uh, so if you're dead, I have nothing to do that. I can work with you guys. I like it. And then that was a very lucky thing because the thing is, in Savannah doesn't have so much people to work in the industry. Right. Usually they come from Atlanta, Atlanta, they come from Miami. So I was lucky to get the post because they really look for people. She hired me right away. She was like, oh, sure, you hired like this. And I couldn't believe it. And I remember to Google it because I don't even know where Savannah was. I was like, let me Google it. Let me see where Savannah. So I Google it. I was like, oh, it's in Georgia. I can actually drive there. It's a six hours drive. Yeah. So that's how I did. And then um, my first day of work, I was uh, promoted to be a key PA. First right day. The first day. Yeah, I was the key PA the first day. And then uh, after they're like, oh my God, we like you so much. Um, I wish you can be with us in Philadelphia. I remember. And I say, well, just book me. And then he's like, no, we don't fly PAs. We just get local. I was like, well, just hire me as a local and I will fly you know, to you. And I did. They booked me. I did. Then he couldn't believe it. I remember, he's like, I thought you're not going to make it. Uh, he's like, I even hired an extra person because I knew you're not going to do it. He was very surprised I actually made it. And then I, everything started to fall. And I started to like follow them, going to all the cities. And they invite me to work in Los Angeles as a PA here in Los Angeles. Uh, and then, uh, like, I think it was like a month and a half after, like two months after, I was an associate producer. 
they asked me to be an associate producer. So it was a very short, but I, you know, every job is an opportunity. Like I, I you know, I was like, oh, I'm gonna work as a, you know, people are like, oh, you're gonna work as a PA is a very hard job, you know? People told me that you're crazy to spend all this money to be a PA. Like you, you have to make money, but actually I was spending money. Yeah. But I never let money stop me. Because when you let money stop you, you stop. You no. Never let money stop you. How many people come to you and they're like, oh, would you like to do this? But I don't have the money for it. I want to do a study. Oh, I cannot. I don't have the money for it. Everybody say that. Yeah. Everyone say, oh, I want to live in Los Angeles. Oh, it's so expensive in Los Angeles. Oh, I, I cannot pay a rent there. This is no excuse. When I came to Los Angeles, I was living in this neighborhood that I live now. And I was like, I don't want to live far away from work. I want to live next to CBS Studios. Because... In my brain, I was like, I'm going to spend money traveling across the city. I have to be close to my job because I know my days will be like 12 days work or more. I'm going to be tired and I want to have as much as possible time in my house to rest. That was always my thought. I don't want to be an hour to go work, an hour to come back. The traffic, it gets you tired. And your time is also worth money. Time is money. And you spend an hour traveling you should spend an hour resting yeah. from, for an next day work. So that was always my, my thought. I found a room for $600 here in this neighborhood that is, you know where I live. Yeah. $600. But you have to look. If you right away say, oh, it's going to be expensive to be in LA. Yeah. You're not going to make it. And then the girl was like, the girl, she's a lady. She was like, I don't live here, she said. I have to tell you something. I live in, because she used to work with a celebrity Malibu. So she, she was a personal chef for this celebrity. So she lives in the celebrity mansion in Malibu. So I was paying $600 for a place that was all for myself. And she used to come home Thursday or Saturdays, Thursday to Saturdays, or sometimes Friday and Saturday. That's it. Right. So you see, if I going to tell myself, oh, it's going to be expensive, or when they have, offer me the job to work as a PA in LA, you know, is, is, it doesn't pay a lot, this job, you know? So I was going to be like, oh, I cannot pay the bills to move there. No, I was like, I'm going. It's an opportunity. I'm going. I don't care how much it's going to cost. I'm going. And I found this room for $600, you know? And so you- it's an opportunity. You, get, you have to catch the opportunity. And then right after they asked me to be an associate producer, you know, so you always have to get the opportunity. And that can be actually one of the first questions that you ask me about what should I do to work in the business? Get the opportunity because when you're inside, you're going to make your own opportunities inside that, you know? Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. God, what I could, you know, one of these days you're going to write a, like a book, a screenplay. <laughs> um, when it, uh, you talk about this book. Do you know Bernard Hiller, right? Yeah, I love him. And then uh, he he told me something interesting. People always say that that you said like, uh, I might, I want my life to be so interesting because I want to write a book of it. But he told me something very beautiful. Actually, it was like a week and a half ago. He said, "Live a life that someone want to write a book about your life." Ooh. I love the word I said. Oh my God. Yeah, that's gorgeous. Yeah, I love it. All right. So you have, let's say, Paul Abdul and Britney Spears. Which you work yeah. for, you work with them both. Yeah. How do you how do you create for one versus the other? How, how does that happen? Well, well, Britney's show got postponed <laughs> too. So uh, but is it like that, that? Both shows I work in Epitabs in those shows, uh, they're the directors of the show. And, um, but both shows are so different. It's very hard. It's a two different, completely different artists. Uh, the British show was a very heavy scenery show. Was, you know, I designed multiple sets, set pieces, was a lot of going on stage. Paula show was in a different scale, you know, of show. So it's just a two completely different shows, you know, but what I can tell for sure, Paul Abdul's show, we were able to actually, everyone, everyone saw the show because, you know, it was, she, she made the show, but the Britney show, unfortunately, 
you know, she postponed the show and, you know, waiting for her to see when we come back. <laughs> right, right. But it is amazing how you, and it goes back to what you say, you get into here, you take in the, the few things that they give you or the things they give you and you create. Yeah, and listen, and with Britney, actually, you know, and actually I will tell you something, both Britney and Paula, I, I grow up listening to them, both of them. Mm. And, and I, was talk, I was talking with Paula Abdul, uh, when I was working with her, I said, you know, Paula, you know, I, I love you since Brazil. I was telling her things about life. And she told me her dad grew up in Brazil as well. And I didn't know about that. Ah! Uh -huh. grew, and she's like, I love Brazil. My, my dad grew up there. And, you, and that, that takes me to things are meant to happen at times. There's certain connections, you know? It's like... Yeah. And yeah. I, will tell something, I will tell something very funny that happened. When I was working on American Idol, I met Paula. Right. No, no one, she was a judge because the last episode we went on stage, everybody went on stage production, everyone to like to do a ball for the last episode on Fox. And when I finished, she was next to me. And I said, oh, is it nice to meet you. And I give her her, we, we give her her. And then I took a self with her. And then years after I was working with her. So she saw the picture. She's like, oh my God. And, you know, because <laughs> I show her, I love Paula. She's awesome. I, I uh, love her. I, love I heard her. she's amazing. And she's amazing. I love her, her heart, her soul. She's so nice. She's so creative as well. Um, and she's always on top of everything, you know, like, you know, like a director too, you know, she's always want to get involved with, with every single detail, which I like it. You know, Jennifer is the same. She get involved like in projects. She want to even meet the person who is doing the nails of the dancers. Wow. Like, who is the person? Let me talk to, like, she wants to listen to everyone. So that's why the job uh, is so well done because she wanna be, she has her hands in every single detail. Even the person who is doing the nails off the dancers. Wow. Okay. All yeah. right. Um, now we were talking about people like, you know, Paula and Brittany and uh, what about shows? I mean, you have the Billboard award shows versus the Latin Grammys, you have the American Music Awards versus the Las Vegas residencies. Uh, what about that? Same kind of? Well, it, well, the billboards I just designed for Jennifer. Right. So that was uh, for De Niro, her song. And then, you know, I designed a, like this bank vault that turned like it spins and turned into like a light installation. Uh, and actually I was nominated for an award because of that, uh, that set. And that was my first, first American show. The American, that was my first American the television show. Yeah, the billboards. And then I was nominated for a very important award. So it's called Knights of Elimination Awards because of that set piece. But the Latin Grammys, I used to design the whole show. So it was a, was a different scale. Like the billboard was just with Jennifer and the Latin Grammys is the full show. Not the main set, but every single performance. Yeah. And then I used to work with uh, uh, with uh, directors, uh, this for division, Ashlyn and Anthony, very creative directors. I love them. Very cool guys. Uh, they work with you know they're doing now Katy Perry's uh, residency in Vegas. So uh, so we used to work together in the show, and it's a lot of work because sometimes I used to design eighteen performances. So that was a lot of work, a lot of set pieces very heavy scenery show and 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 was was a tough show to do it was not easy a lot of scenery a lot of scenery and things that have to be hung it has to be a new lift come back and it's a lot of work <laughs> all this work you do you have to really take care of yourself spiritually you have to eat the right foods you have to exercise yeah i always exercise i always do biking hiking i'm always on the beach yeah. you know you have to be have your time for yourself as well um work is very important and i'm kind of workaholic too when mm -hmm. i'm it's so crazy when i'm when i start a project i cannot i cannot like i cannot stop if i don't finish like i have to keep going but i lately i've been putting limits on myself in the beginning i used to design sometimes for 20 hours i did one time 18 hours designing like i did and i start to have pain in my hands and I, I got this let me show you something i got this I got this mouse that is a vertical mouse. Oh, right. Because when you like that designing, because your hands is 
is designed, your hand is, is, is made to be like that, not like that. Right. So when you're on the, on the desk, you're forcing yourself to do something that you're not designed to do, right. <laughs> which is this. The human hand is to be like that, not to be like that. Yeah. So this is a pressure in your body. Little pressure, nothing crazy. But after 20 years in that thing, it, it starts to feel pain. So that's why I got this vertical mouse. This way I can be for more hours and don't feel so much pain because you're vertically designing things. Okay, I have to buy stock in that mouse. <laughs> yeah, and then I got a table. I have a table that go up and then down because sometimes I like to design standing. So I have like this table is electric and go up and then down. I have this, that, this chair that also do all those things because I spend a lot of my time sitting Yeah, and you have to take care of your body. It's really important. You have to take care. And sometimes when you work, you don't think about that. You're going to be working like this and doing things. No, you have to be in the right position. Put your, your, your head and relax and design because you're going to be there for like 10 hours, you know? But I, lately, I've been putting limits on myself. Before, I, I was not putting limits. But lately, I'm like, I have to take care of myself. And then I, I have a time limit. I stop. Next day is the next day. I would do it, you know? Um, and also... I don't know why I design faster today than before, you know, like years ago, I used to have a time. Now I design way faster. I think because you get better after you, you get better. So you, it's just like the process is, is, it's not easier, but you get better. So you, you do. So I put limits on myself and you have to take care of yourself, take care of your body. Your body is a, is a, always a reflection of who you are or how your lifestyle are, not who you are, but like your lifestyle, you know? So you really have to take care of your body. So that's why I bike a lot, a lot of water, eat right, you know, and that's it. Well, it's too, you were saying about, um, you know, sitting in the chair too long. I mean, so many of us are sitting at the computer and, and the day goes by, we have to get up every hour, stretch and move. Oh yeah, we need um, to, it's very important, very important. You're not gonna feel this now, but maybe when you're 50, 60, you're gonna be like, Oh, why I was there for so many years in that position, you know. Luckily, I waited tables for a while, so I got to move. <laughs> oh, <laughs> That's my good. That's yeah. good. Yeah, I got to perform. I got to sing to my my uh, customers, so I got to perform in a way. <laughs> That's beautiful. I love that. So, uh, a couple more questions. I know Disney, Walt Disney, and the Hall of Villains. I love the villains. And and the holiday show. I mean, what what's what what about Disney? Working for Disney. Well, it's it's amazing, um, you know, and it's 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 great. I like to work with them. They're very specific, you know, what they do, which I like because I'm a very detailed person. Mm -hmm. Like details for me, I'm very thick with everything, um, and it's great to work with them. But Disney's such a big company. Mm -hmm. You know, like the parks are completely different from the TV for the characters, for, you know, for the movies, like it's so different. Yeah. And um, sometimes you cannot do something because that belongs to the, the, the TV side or the park side or the branding side. So it's always like you have to go, oh, okay, I have to get permission by who? It's not just one entity. It's a, such a huge uh, company that I love to work. I love to work with them. And, um, and also Napoleon and Tabitha also, they're the executive producers of those shows. Oh. And, then, um, and, then we, and then we designed the show and it's, it's awesome. And I'm, actually, I'm working on another Disney show now, too. Ah, oh gosh. Yeah. Well, you did yeah. the holiday show and do you have a favorite holiday? Christmas, I really like Christmas. Yeah, family. Christmas, yeah, I like it. But uh, it's so crazy because Halloween is really fun too. That's true. The, the costumes you could wear. <laughs> Maybe Halloween. I think Halloween is my favorite. I think Halloween is my favorite. Yeah. That's, that's definitely, it's always been in my top two. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what's, what's your biggest dream? Wow, this is a dream. I mean, dream something to me, something that I, maybe I cannot do, it, maybe. Like, go to space. Like, you know, like you cannot reach or something. I don't think I'm going to be an astronaut. It's like, <laughs> yes, but you will design a show in space. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. 
I will actually that that's actually that's kind of dream for me. I don't think I will ever gonna do it, but like it's a dream. I mean, I have goals in life. Yeah, the goals is different, but a dream is something that is like unreachable. Like in a dream, when you sleep and you're dreaming and and you close your eyes and you're dreaming, you cannot touch it, you know. And dream to me feels like that, like going to space. Something I don't think I could do it. <laughs> I, like I have life goals. I have a lot of life goals. I, I do have life goals. I do have it. Life goals versus dreams. Hmm. Yeah. So what's next for you, Clay? Project-wise? Well, I have this Disney show now happening. So that's something that I'm doing right now. Um, I'm doing an art installation in Vegas. Oh. Okay. For Jennifer. Uh, using one of the set pieces for the show. So that's a very excited project that I'm working and I'm working another music festival later this year that I'm very excited to. And another one next month as well. So that's what I cannot say, but those projects happening now. And it's crazy how the world is back. Yeah. Like so many, like I, I was trying to book people for this Disney show. Hi. People have that been calling me during the pandemic. Hey, if you know anything, let me know. I was like, sure. So I, I write those names. I put in a list. So when I have something, I call those people. No one available. Everybody's like, oh, I'm sorry. I'm doing this project. I'm sorry. I'm going out. Like, everybody's busy. Everyone is busy. And because I feel because people are in the pandemic and everybody was home for all the year, no, for the whole year. Now that everything is opening up, everybody want to go out. Everybody want to do stuff. Everybody want to go to shows, you know, go to Vegas, you know, just do all those shows. And, you know, that's why I feel next year will be the best year for the entertainment. Like people will be crazy working. Even Celine Dion, I don't know if you saw, she was not able to book her tour next year. They have to postpone her tour for 2023 because they don't have venues available because everything is taking already. Oh, wow. Yeah. So the industry is getting back, you know, not yet, but it starts to get on the track. You're going to see next year. Next year will be crazy, crazy year. People will be crazy going to shows. And I'm very excited about it. I can't wait to design a lot of shows next year. <laughs> <laughs> and we can't wait to come see it. <laughs> and I can't wait to see you in person. I haven't seen you in Ohio. I know. It's, you look great. You look healthy. And Thank you. You too. Oh. You too. Thank you. You too. Always, always, always sunscreen. Always. A sunscreen, yeah. Sunscreen. As you and see. Always mo and always moisturize your neck as well. Okay. Because it's going to be your face in the future. So you always have to moisturize your neck. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I like looking at myself now going, oh my God. I look at yeah. you, you. You can see you've been in the sun with nice sunscreen. I've been inside. <laughs> no, I put when I, when I say sunscreen is sunblock to block. Right. Don't let the sun goes to you. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's the lesson for the day. Use your sunscreen. <laughs> exactly. Always, always sunblock. Always. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you so much for inviting me. It was a was was a very good time that I have talking to you and shot with you and you know and I can't wait to do it again. Thank you. I appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you.